as is usual, the bees have thrown a, an, a googly at us. <laughs> so there's always something new in the barrel. And um, so I thought, oh, they've either attempted to swarm and returned without the queen, or they're so opulent they're preparing to swarm. If you remember last time, we we removed six charged queen cells and we used the royal jelly to charge the uh, yeah. the queen cups. Well, if they had that sort of wherewithal, they would probably raise some more queen cells in the, uh, what is it, nine, eight, nine days since yeah. we did it last. And um, I had no option, that was the, the gap. But because we clip and mark our queens, clipping being the key in yeah. this instance we can we can stretch the uh, uh the inspection period to 10 days rather than seven days so if they do attempt to swarm um the queen will drop to the ground and we don't lose the bees yeah right as it happens i came back again last night and looked at the floor at the rear underneath the open mesh floor and there's a little cluster and I looked closely at this cluster, got a torch, and there was the queen. Wow. So in one respect, it saves us a whole load of hassle today trying to find the queen. Yeah. Because we now have her in a cage. I popped her in a cage with a piece of, um, with a piece of crystallized honey from last year, our own honey. And I put three worker bees in with her from the little cluster. And she's in there now wondering what the hell's happened <laughs> and the cluster at the back underneath the open mesh floor is wondering where the queen is yeah so what i'm going to do today is just as soon as i've got the um the rack of queen cells away which i'm going to do bring them over here i'm going to move the uh the queen right colony over to the side and then I'm going to put the queen in that cage between two frames, lent up against the stick I've got in the open mesh floor. Yep. And we should hopefully see them parade in to the gap between the two frames where the queen will be in the cage while we are sorting the, the frames out for our mating nucleuses with all of the uh, new queen cells. Okay, so it's a bit multitasking. It is. Yeah. And it's taken a little bit of... A logistical uh, nightmare this morning to pull it all together but I think we can do it fairly logically okay okay so we're hoping none of the others have hatched yes because if one rack. of them has hatched she'll go around and destroy all the others so the first job on our agenda will be we'll move the supers off to the side yeah we're going to move this box with the queen cells in it right it's over the there onto here. that yep. lid. And I'll, uh, I'll leave these closed down, but I'm going to move this box to the side and I'm going to rest two frames held together here uh, with the queen strapped between them, re leaning up against that rod down to here. To encourage these out from underneath and they'll yeah. crawl along. So while we're working on the other box, hopefully they'll parade out to join the queen. Wow. And this is the new box that the queen will go into, ready. It's got a queen excluder o over the top of the open mesh floor underneath the brood box. Yeah. So as to discourage them from one, uh, absconding. Yeah. Because they would, unless we take a frame of brood from here and add it to that, they've got no brood to hold them there, so. It's always wise for a couple of days to have a, uh, a queen excluder underneath the brood box. It saves you the hassle of losing the swarm uh, or, the, or the new artificial swarm and um, disturbing your neighbors. Right, so I don't want to use too much smoke, but I'm going to use just a drift. Yep. Because I want to encourage the, the bees to remain on their combs so that when I transfer them, to the mating nukes, they're already populated and I don't have to go shaking loads of bees in. 
All of these mating nukes are sealed off at the entrance because they're going to remain here. Therefore, they'll be sealed up for at least two days. I've got a, a feeder on each of them. And in the feeder, I've put some pollen patty one side and I'm going to put some syrup um, on the other and I'll yep. keep them, that will keep them uh, in good fettle while they're confined and until the queen cells hatch. Yeah. Right, first jobs first, we'll get the... Supers out of the way. Supers off. So the queen has already got a working population in there. Okay. Yep. Now this is the box that I want to uh, take over there. There shouldn't be any sign of queens here. Um, no, I'll just do that. Away from the supers though. Okay, here we go. Out of the way, girl. Now then, I've got to try and get this over to there with the floor. Oh, blimey. What I want to do now is put the queen in a cage. Between those two frames. Yeah. They'll, they'll identify the queen there fairly quickly. I'll put this now to replace that box so that the returning foragers have got somewhere to go. Got a new floor. Notice I've I've filled in the uh, the open mesh floor at the back with a oh, yeah. piece of uh, because there'll be some that have gone off foraging from the from the swarm. I want to be wanting to return back there. Yes, and I don't want them to cluster underneath this floor. I'm going to take the Lids off. Roofs and feeders off. Okay, so that should be good enough for that. This is a thermal thermos box. I have a, a rack for all my queen cells to go in. There's syrup in the bottom of these filled uh, cages, so that if one of the virgin queens hatches, she's got wherewithal to to feed herself. There's a hot water bottle at the bottom yeah. with a wet flannel on top so it's nice and humid in here and they won't chill. Not that I'm going to do this here, I'm just showing you this here because I brought the queen out in this box. It's full of bees this, you know. <laughs> yeah, it is, isn't it? Yeah. It's my bee factory. That's all food, okay? Yep. And I'm going to put that on the outside of one of the, uh, one of the nukes. One of the nukes. So I want really, if I can, to put two frames of uh, hatching bees. Yeah. Or bees about to hatch, and some uh, some food, some stores. Yep. This is the moment of truth. How many have survived? too good. Some of them have been torn down. Yeah, some of them have been torn down. Or a lot of them have been torn down. I think we might have a couple that have hatched. Oh, not too good. Let's have a look here. Yeah, we've only got one, two. No, we've only got one. Well, is it not a hatch though? Still capped. It's capped. No, they've all been uh, 
either abandoned or the queen got out and killed the rest. So we're hoping for some queen cells in the in the main in the main brood brood chamber. Yeah, I'm not going to mess around. I'll just take this one off. There's only one out of all of that. Shoot, that's the worst ever. And that is that's partly because possibly there was an issue with the age of them, or well, the, the issue with the age is that they may have hatched Earlier. early. <laughs> and gone along and just topped the rest, you know? Yeah. So, we have one that I can put in to one of these cups to put in later. I need to find out if there's brood here mm. first. Um, there's no point in hanging leaving this hanging in there. There's nothing in any of them. They've all been opened up. Oh, look, there's a queen cell at the bottom. Oh, my goodness. They really are unpredictable sometimes, aren't they? That must be an emergency cell that was produced after the last inspection. Ah, oh, queen cells, look at them. Emergency queen cells on the right. Wow. That's why. Yeah. Not developed here syndrome, and they're not far off hatching. See that how how they're going dark at the end yes, there. Yes. So that's these here, isn't that's it? That's where the, the both from outside and inside they're being thinned down, ready for the queens to hatch. So um, I've got queen cells there, a queen cell there. I think we have the wherewithal to make up three mating nukes anyway from them. Yeah. Okay. So I think I'll go ahead and quickly do that and then um, we'll move on and have a look at the, uh, the Queen Wright section, okay? I'm wondering whether to actually... They're so close to one another, I think the first one out will kill the other one. Yeah. Oh, I'll leave them. I'll put that in uh, in here, and this one here was just stores, so we'll put that in by the side of it and shut them down. Yeah, just stores and un and cat brood. That's ideal, isn't it? Yeah. So we'll we'll put them in there, and this was the one with the. Uh, Queen cell at the bottom. That's it. Oh yeah. Bottom right hand side. So we'll we'll go with it. We'll see what they uh, come up with. If we find when we open up the queen right section that we have um, better better cells. prospects, we'll change it. And those frames are very well populated, so I'm not going to have to shake anything in. Now we're going to use that queen cell in this next one because yep. there's no queen cells on these. So these are stores and brood, aren't These they? are brood and stores. Might as well do it, because it's the only one I can do it on. I take the, uh, the queen cell out with a screw, and then I wrap a piece of opened up paper clip. Around it? Around it, so that I can drop that down into the area of the uh, frame where she can hatch. So I'm going to pop that down there and if it goes down low enough it'll squidge in between the the shoulder of the top bar and that's there just to see that? Yeah. Okay it is. so we've made up three mating nukes I'll use these for um, whatever the Queen Wright section presents itself with, okay? Yep. Because they're, they're no good to me as they are there. What a shame, eh? Every one of those has been 
opened up and cleared. That'll okay, work. let's have a look at the, um, the queen right section now. Ah, they seem to be gradually taking note that the queen is there. Oh, look at them here. <laughs> They're starting to return. The foragers are returning. Wow. That's okay. I've somehow got to work on this with that between my legs. <laughs> oh, look at that. A few bees in there. Yes. That's something they're not short of, these hives. I expect we will find at least a half a dozen good queen cells in this one. What I'm looking to do here is find a couple of frames that are good for the queen to go on straight away, right? So if it's only capped brood, I'll put one in there and one with food, and then we'll put these in by the side of them or in between them. And then this, we will leave at least one cell in to raise. So this will become a... This will become a, a large mating yep. nuke. But with the object that I'm going to reunite it with this queen right section later, and I might dispatch the queen. Now, they're going to prove me wrong here. We'll probably get to the end of this and we find there's no bloody queen cells at all. <laughs> oh, there's one. Look at hey. that. Now, that, that is rather nice. That is nice. That's nicer than the emergency ones we saw, isn't it? Yeah, although it is drawn out like an emergency, but it is... A good size. A good size at the bottom. Right, so we now know this unit has a viable queen cell. I should actually mark it. Stick a pin on it. Yeah. It's a good idea with the elastic bands around those because they're just... It is when you can get your pins out. As long as you showered in a conf yeah. pink confetti. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put them there. That was at the bottom down there, wasn't it? Yeah. Okay, so now I know where the queen cell is. Let's have a look at these. Oh, another one. That's a nice one as well, isn't it? And lots of nice cat brood. I think I might use this one for my next... Look at that cat brood. Oh, wow. That's a beautiful frame. Yeah, so that one's going to go in here. They just proved that they can do a better job without my help. <laughs> <laughs> Not half as convenient though, girls. Not half as convenient. Now they're charging a cell up the top there, which we might need to just destroy. Oh. Wow. One is about to be capped and the other one is nearly capped. So what I'm going to do, this is not capped yet, this one. Uh, let me have a look. Hang on, I'll make sure that this one is properly charged. Yes, it is. I think what I'll do is I'll, I'll remove the capped one, because you can never tell whether they are charged or not. Probably is, it is. Oh, look. There's another, and there's a couple in the bottom, three, four along the bottom, five, six, Seven, all along eight. the mid-rib. That's a lot. That's a lot there, yeah. I'll have to destroy all of them, I think. Oh, God, another one. And look at the Seven. cells at the bottom of that. And that's all... All worker, isn't it? Yeah, no, I could put this in with the queen, actually. Because it's all cat brood. I'll just take the queen cells out. They're ginormous, aren't they? Yeah, and actually, from experience, the, the bigger they are is not, not necessarily the, uh, the, uh, the, the best thing. No. Because they, sometimes they fall to the bottom. The grub falls to the bottom of the... Uh, oh, away from the food. And then away from the food, yeah. Well, I'm going to put this in and I'm going to put the queen on this because that's all cat brood. It's, it's, yeah. it's almost completely full of cat brood. And I want this queen to get... Uh, 
cracking again. I might have to shake them in, you know. There she is. There she goes. Okay, so now we've got the queen with ample supplies and good laying area in the artificial swarm and we've reduced somewhat the uh, the remaining um, half of the brood nest with at least one viable queen cell. I might need to go through them again in a couple of days time to make sure they haven't raised some more queen cells. Um, I only want them to raise one, I don't want them to keep sending out casts. The thing I have to do now is get the bees from the open mesh floor into that body. Um, I suspect the simplest way to do that would be to put a new floor down, put the brood body on top of it and then shake the bees into it. So that's what I'm going to do. Just put this to one side for a minute. This is another use for the uh, inner layer. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? It's a queen. Isn't it's it? a queen. That's why we had such tr trouble. They were all hatching. That one's just hatched. Wow. So in retrospect, we started with a disaster and we've ended up with something that's not quite a disaster, but <laughs> <laughs> we've, um, we've got a situation here now where I need to go through each of these in a couple of days time and check that they have only got one viable queen cell and um, this one in particular because it is so big yeah the object of this would be to uh, get a queen mated and laying and if it's good i will then unite it with this half here having taken the old queen away because she's obviously beginning to fail, otherwise they wouldn't have uh, undertaken the sort of swarming activity they have. So it, it looked a bit messy, um, but I think we made the best of a bad job. Really. Yeah, oh, really good. So we've managed to use one of our own queen cells, yep. and they've shown me how to produce them properly for the others. <laughs> <laughs> as usual <laughs> and I think we have uh, a crop of honey already in the making there so um, with any luck all of the foragers will go back to join the queen in the artificial swarm half even those I've shaken in there they'll go and they're they've already reoriented to that spot this will thin down a bit and um, will become a viable unit in its own right. After two days being shut in, all of these nukes should be established as a, a colony in their own right. And um, I should be able to open up the front doors without losing too many of the bees. They've all got stores. They've all got, and that's pollen and nectar. They've all got hatching brood and they've all got a viable queen cell and I'll be feeding them syrup in a short while to make sure they've got uh, everything to keep them going while they're confined. <clears throat> in conclusion um, what we did today or found today was not one of my proudest moments but um, 
that's beekeeping. You know, things don't always happen exactly as you expect them to. Uh, what it does do, in my mind, uh, is confirm that the bees agreed with us at the last grafting session that the grubs we were using were too old. And out of that whole rack of 20 odd queen cups, only one was of an age that they would take through to conclusion. But they stripped all of the royal jelly that was in there away. They probably consumed the grubs because they, they don't waste anything. No. Um, and they raised the equivalent number of viable cells themselves in the queen right section, which we again today either removed or harvested. So we, we harvested basically the same number of cells that we would have done for setting up mating nukes in the garden, but they happened to be raised by the bees themselves on their own comb. Um, so basically developed by them, not me. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we set up um, five, six nukes, um, all with their new cells. Um, we removed another half a dozen that would have been would have been viable, but um, we didn't want to uh, have the colony issuing any more casts. No. Now, also, what happened when I arrived late last night? Um, I had a quick look at the hive. It was still just light enough to see what was happening. I saw the beard of bees on the front entrance and the beard of bees around and under the open mesh floor at the back. And having spent a bit of time looking around the floor, I noticed a small cluster and sure enough, the queen was there. So they had yesterday, the day I was uh, traveling back, tried to swarm unsuccessfully because the queen was clipped. Mm. Um, which we've mentioned already, um, but they were still attentive to the Queen and if given a chance will we'll react with her as if she had swarmed. So what we did this morning was take advantage of that. We tried to get them to follow the Queen, which I picked up and put in a cage, and we did basically a Pagden artificial swarm. We put the queen cage in the new box on the old stand uh, underneath the original supers. We applied, I think, four frames of uh, capped brood and food to that box so that the queen had the wherewithal to get cracking and start building the nest again. And underneath all of that, I've put a queen excluder to uh, ensure that we don't end up with them attempting to abscond or swarm again in the near future. All of the mating nukes and the artificial swarm itself need to be checked again in a couple of days time, which I will do to make sure they're not raising any more viable queen cells from what remains of the viable larvae. But again, the bees teach us a lesson and um, I just enjoy learning. Every time is different. It really is, isn't it? <laughs> we were very lucky to get as far as we did without a hitch in yeah. the process of raising the queen cells. The only problem we had, as I say, was that due to weather or whatever it was, the queen stopped laying earlier than she should have done and we ended up having to use grubs that were too old for purpose. So. Um, it served the purpose with us being able to perform the task of grafting, but um, without them being uh, viable as an end result. The only thing we've got left to do now today is to um, 
put some syrup on each of the uh, nukes, uh, which we can do without gear on because they're um, covered and the bees can't come out. We'll do that in a moment. You can hear them getting excited. Getting then. excited because of the light. So what I'll do now is I'm going to put some syrup in the um, in the back trough here. Yep. That should delight them, calm them down, and give them the wherewithal to remain viable. Normally I'd do this in the evening. But um, as there's a flow on, and there's only this particular colony here, it won't, it won't cause robbing. These are all sealed up. God, look at that. Yeah. It's a frenzy, isn't it? Yep. So there you go. Oh, now, once they're up, they'll soon get the, uh, the message that there's stores up top. They'll identify the uh, pollen substitute in there and uh, that will give them the wherewithal. Now they know it's there, that will calm them down. Now, strictly speaking, I wouldn't want to open these up for two to three weeks. Mm. But I will do because of the prospect of there being other queen cells raised, which uh, being strong nukes, they would uh, be able to do that. Be able to do, yeah. These are quite good bees, aren't they? They are, yeah. And that's why I have them in my garden. They're, um, they're reasonably docile. And it takes a lot to bring them up into a frenzy. Mm. They're ideal, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. So that's it. I did have another box of six frames of stores, which I was going to use to fill the, uh, the gaps in each of these nukes. But as you saw, the stores were so, mm. uh, so full of um, pollen, nectar and honey. <laughs> really no need. No need. So I, I've used... I've used up one complete box and a bit on the nukes and I've done a Pagden uh, artificial swarm as well with a bit of a boost to try and get the queen laying again quickly onto some yeah. drawn comb and maybe get a crop of honey from them. Well, there we are. Right. Thank you very much. Pleasure. <laughs>